Uh, Honourable Chair, this uh, on so-called online safety bill, I think, has become a classic example how this parliament, this current parliament, is making a complete mockery of the legislative process. Uh, if you examine the history of how this bill has come about and how it has been presented to parliament, it is very clear that due process, the due uh, procedure, uh, the procedure that is there are in the standing orders, in our traditions, in terms of legislation, has, legislature has, com has been completely violated. This bill was gazetted on the 15th of September in 2023. 46 petitions were filed against it. When the case came up in the Supreme Court, on the very first day, the Attorney General presented 31 amendments. This was a bill that had 57 clauses over 50% of the bill were, uh, amendments to the bill were pro proposed by the Attorney General. The petitioners were not informed of these amendments. They are, the the law lawyers were not given any time to discuss the amendments with their clients. Uh, the case uh, went on for three days without uh, any uh, discussion or any chance for, the for the, the, those citizens who actually petitioned the court on this to examine or discuss the proposed amendments brought by the AG on the first day itself. So there in itself, the first uh, pro uh, violation occurred of this legislative pro procedure. Judicial oversight was denied, proper judicial oversight was denied, and the uh, opportunity for the public to object to uh, the amended uh, bill was also denied. Then this was presented to the Sectoral Oversight Committee. And yesterday it was argued that the Sectoral Over Oversight Committee submitted a report in relation to the bill. I, I took a look at that report. It's a two-page report basically with the agenda. There's no real discussion, no real analysis, nothing that is expected from a Sectoral Oversight Committee. So once again, it, is very clear, it was very clear that the Sectoral Oversight Committee was simply used uh, as, a, as a tool to, to bring this uh, bill forward for the second reading. The minister who, who is presenting this bill is already talking about amendments to the bill. The bill has not been even passed. He is promising parties that the bill will be amended, even before the bill is passed. So then it, that, that in itself shows that the minister and the government is well aware that this is a highly flawed piece of legislature. So when this is so, if the minister himself agrees that this bill needs to be amended as soon as possible, in fact, when he spoke to me yesterday and he said that within this week, amendments will be presented to cabinet. If that is the case, what is the mighty rush in, uh, uh, what is the mighty hurry to rush this bill through at this point in time? Why can't we take in all those amendments that have been discussed that have been discussed by the uh, industry with the minister and present a, a better piece of legislation at a, at a later date if the minister himself is accepting that amendments are necessary. So at this point, this government is rushing through this flawed piece of legislation, which the minister himself is accepting, because otherwise he need not talk of amendments, even before the bill is passed, right? You're rushing through this uh, piece of legislation with ignoring all the voices of opposition. I mean, forget political parties, forget the opposition. This government has consistently ignored the, uh, ignored the uh, opinion of the, op uh, of the opposition. Let let's forget about that. But this government is claiming that it's going to work with the industry. It is going to work to take Sri Lanka to the next step with regard to artificial intelligence in, in the tech industry. The, the, those in the tech industry those who have been uh, named as intermediaries, internet intermediaries in this bill, have been strongly opposed to the bill, have many criticisms of this bill, have proposed serious amendments to this bill. But this government has chosen to ignore that as well. So it is very clear that the intention of this bill is nothing to do with online security. It is nothing, the, the minister talked about uh, uh, yesterday about the need to prepare, protect women and children from, in, uh, from internet ab uh, online abuse. 
the women and children are trotted out regularly by this government as a smoke screen to hide their more, most devious and most dangerous uh, measures. Right? This bill has nothing to do with protecting women and children. If already there are existing laws, the civil law was even recently amended, that anyone can take action against defamation, any, any action can be taken. The laws are already present in our, in, our, in our system, in our judicial system. The problem is not with the lack of laws. The problem is with the implementation of laws. If the minister takes the trouble to actually talk to women and children who have faced this problem in this country, who have faced online abuse, who have faced not just online abuse, uh, physical abuse and harassment, and the treatment that is meted out by the police, the, the, the very department that he overlooks, he should get an understanding that it's not the lack of laws that is preventing justice or from being uh, uh, justice being meted out to women and children of uh, what is preventing the protection of women and children in this country. There is, there, there is absolutely no uh, institutional or cultural uh, change within the, within the police which enables them to deal with the issues of women and children in a sensitive manner. There are, there are many stories of how women are treated, how children are treated by the police of this country. This is not because of the lack of law. This is to do with attitude. This is to do with lack of resources. This is to do with the lack of leadership, right? So the, the, the narrative that the government is putting out, that this, the main intent of this bill is for the protection of vulnerable communities, is a complete lie. It is very clear that the one and only intention of this government is to suppress dissent, to suppress dissent at a time when, the election, when an election is due in a few months. Listening to the speeches made by members of the government during this time, this, the, it is very clear that what is being talked about, what is being presented, is, a, is an effort to control criticism, is an effort to control dissent. All the examples that have been brought forward today and yesterday refer to attacks to online criticisms that have been leveled against them, against all of us. That is part of public life. Deal with it. We have to deal with it. When it was all right, for, when it was in the favor of members of the government, when these online onslaughts were against their opponents, this, there was not a problem. Then it was not a problem. Now. When it is turned against them, suddenly they have become highly indignant, highly worried, and are talking about online safety. So this is very clearly, it is, there is no use in beating around the bush here. The intent of the government is clear. This is about uh, controlling dissent. It is about taking control of public discourse, of public narrative at a crucial time in this country when democracy needs to be uh, protected at all costs. And this is, what, uh, that this is not the intent of the government, that every instrument is going to be used to stifle dissent is very clear. But uh, at the same time, it is important when we are thinking about this kind of legislature, when we are thinking about bringing in these kinds of laws that have an impact on uh, certain constitutionally protected rights, there, there, is a, there is a need to balance competing rights. This is, this is a hugely important thing, uh, task, uh, thing for us to consider. And in this instance, when it comes to things like online safety, because it is very much on, on the edge of how we balance competing rights, this becomes even, all, or even more critical. In a way, the internet, and the internet revolution has democratized the media, has democratized the sharing of information. Citizens themselves are now producing, creating information, creating news. This is a good thing. This is not something to be scared of. This is what we want. In a vibrant democracy, citizens have to be more engaged. It, 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 we cannot be afraid of engaged citizens. We cannot be afraid of critical citizens. But, this, but at the same time, we agree that there need, need to be measures that ensure 
that in the interest of allowing the right, uh, uh, right to express themselves, to, uh, the idea of expressing dissent, that people are not harmed, that people are not uh, slandered, that those, are, those, those rights have to be uh, maintained. However, when, when there are such competing demands, need, we need to be... Honourable Member, you have two more minutes. Thank you. We need to be extremely careful about which of these rights we uphold and how we balance these many rights that as, a led, as, a, as an assembly we are, we are committed uh, to protect. So, um, it is, I also want to say this, right? If this government thinks that bringing in these types of laws is going to thwart the will of the people, that it's going to crush the voice of the people, I think they're making a huge mistake. They're making a huge mistake. If they want to win over the people, then they have to look into themselves, look at what hear, properly hear what the people are saying, and try to understand why this dissent is emerging in such a forceful manner, and do, do, make some at attempt at course correction. Rather, what this government is doing, what those in power are doing, is to try and crush that, to, 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 uh, to not even acknowledge that there might be a basis on which why citizens are feeling so angry and why citizens are feeling so excluded uh, and, mis un and not unrepresented by those in power, th those in power that they themselves have elected. There are lessons to be learned here if, the, if, the, if those in power are willing to learn, but the, but the government has shown, over, demonstrated over and over again their unwillingness to learn. But I again say, you are making a big mistake. You are not going to be able to thwart the will of the people or crush dissent. But I want you to think about this. Think about the damage that you're causing in your petty interests, in your petty if efforts to maintain power at any cost. Think of the damage you're doing to this country. Think of the international, the damage, the, the, the reputation of this country internationally. Think of the damage you're doing to potential investors, to the, poten the, to, to the environment to attract investors to this country. All of member, this cannot, please wind up. I, I'm winding up. All of these issues cannot be secondary for the petty interests of the utterly selfish efforts of this government to remain in power at all costs. So there is still an opportunity for you to take a step back. There's still an opportunity for you to do some kind of course correction. But if you go ahead Honorable with Member, this, if you up. go ahead with this, the, the citizens of this country will, will reply uh, uh, in, in an effective manner. Thank you, Thank you very much. अपक्षपाती वार्ता करने